I'm Dave Henkels. I'm the Vice Chair, Sudbury Conservation Commission. Uh, I do want to say initially that I want to give credit for what I'm reading to Charlie Russo, who is also a member of the Commission. He is not in attendance tonight. Debbie and I and several other, other members of the Commission have taken the liberty of looking at what Charlie had prepared and added some modifications and some additional detail. The environmental impacts within the Eversource filing have been underestimated or omitted and provide insufficient information to enable the siting board to make a determination per MGL 164. Choosing an MBTA route option, whether above or below ground, would permanently sacrifice these natural resources to provide a redundant transmission line. In other communities, with smaller conservation spaces, spaces in which a linear route would have a marginal effect on the conservation land, a weighing of three may be appropriate, but not when the route would fragment a collection of much larger conservation lands, as Debbie had just mentioned. In addition, traffic congestion would be a temporary impact, and thus should be decreased from its five, number five ranking. Huh. If these values were flip-flops so that the permanent environmental impacts were weighed higher than the temporary impacts of, temp of traffic congestion, the rankings of environmental impacts in Table 4-6 on page 4-29 would in effect be very, very different. The methodology being used to evaluate impacts to environmental and public health is indeed flawed because of the weighing being used. As an example, Mass DOT's award-winning project development and design guide has become a national model for developing context-sensitive, community-friendly infrastructure projects. The way to truly make the Eversource project context-sensitive and stakeholder-influenced, and thus consistent with the state policy trends, would be to give the community a voice in the wanes of the environmental impacts. Similarly, in the I'm sorry. Similarly, in the environmental notice form or the ENF, filed with the Mass Environmental Policy Act or the MEPA office, to be determined is included or was included to standard questions in the ENF form six times in the first 29 pages. While some of these responses are because of pending information, which we just got today, about endangered species, responding to specific standard questions with to be determined every five pages or so indicates the level of accuracy and completeness in this application. The petitioner to the Sudbury Conservation Commission, who included to be determined as the response to a standard question every fifth page, of a filing wouldn't be, would be in, certainly told to refile. As you know, there are eight interests of the State Wetland Protection Act. All are designed to protect human health and in infrastructure. The ability of wetlands to provide flood control is just one of those interests, and one that is relevant to plans for nine miles of underground high voltage electrical wire drinking water supply, aquifer recharge, stormwater management, and pollution prevention are among the many interests that provide obvious benefits to the public and human health. The noticed alternative route, the underground option with existing roadways, should become the preferred route. And should that project proceed, ultimately the route that should be chosen. Per Eversource's EF, SB filing, this would reduce the wetland impacts. In conclusion, please review the environmental impacts of this filing and especially the methodology used to estimate those impacts. A comprehensive and comparative analysis will show that the MBT route, whether above or below ground, is indeed flawed and that the in-road in option should be the preferred route. The analysis to date has been flawed and the proponents should be required to make a fair comparison with realistic weighting. Thank you.